This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, saving your day from boredom with the best podcasting entertainment. Hello and welcome, super fans. This is your one stop shop for all Chicago sports news. We are a weekly podcast that is here to bring you a whole lot of opinions, a whole lot of fan takes, and a whole lot of uh, complaining as of late, to be honest. But this is week four of the quarantine. We are all doing good here. I hope you guys at home are doing well as well. Best wishes out there to everybody. Please stay inside. Please respect the stay-at-home orders. Um, it's really bad out there. So just just toss that out there up front. Uh, this week, I'm joined by Ricky Widmer. What's up, what's up, guys? And Sean Anderson. Hello there. And we are going to be covering some positive news about the Bulls for the first time in a long time. We have a new president of basketball operations, and we'll be talking about what this means for the Chicago Bulls. Uh, then we will be having in one of our patrons, Pat, to talk about the... I'm trying to think how I would phrase this. Talk about um, if the NBA needs to start up a Rooney Rule-esque situation for interviewing front office jobs, uh, as well as coaches, I think. Um, And then our final topic of the day, a little bit of fun we're going to toss in there, and that'll be Donovan Mitchell apparently is uh, citing for divorce uh, irreconcilable differences (laughs) from Rudy Gobert. So... The name got tossed out there. Would the Bulls be interested in Donovan Mitchell? Let's explore a little bit. But before we get into it, if you do want to support us in these uh, trying times, I would say, you know, just subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out on Twitch. Uh, If you want to go above and beyond, uh, check us out on patreon.com slash most fail podcasts. But yeah, we have our new president of basketball operations in a name that I'm going to let Sean say because I've already forgotten how Can to I try it. it? Can I oh, try Rick, it? Oh, Ricky, yes, yes. Arturis Karnasovas. No. Karnasovas, right? Arturis Arturis Karnasovas. 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 You got you got okay. to throw in that 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 emphasis. That's what that that uh I thought that I actually accent fucking mark apparently it. means. I you, thought it's I close. Fucking had it. But yeah, no, I, Arturis Karnasovas is okay. is his name. There we go. So with him as Dave the new Sam. man in charge, what is the plan going for? <laughs> he totally for totally ignored for what who? Sean said. Sean's for like, who? Dave, say it. <laughs> What's the plan Arturo. for who? Karnashovas. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. It's just, you got it. I have a goldfish, Sean. <laughs> like, you can't expect me to have names on, on lock like day well, one. I just like how Sean... Sh- fucking head because he's running your team. Sean's I'm, like, I'm Dave, low. say it. And Dave just kept going. Didn't stop. Nope. <laughs> I not tried. Try. <laughs> I tried. Um, but yeah, with our tourists, Karnashovas, as the new head of basketball operations, president of basketball operations, um, I guess I kind of want to know what the plan is going forward for this Bulls team. You know, we heard the public comments. Boylan, absolutely not sweating the job. He feels confident that he's going to be the coach next year, as I'm sure we all are. Um, <laughs> but there's a lot of moves to make in the front office still. Uh, there are a lot of GMs that are being tossed out as potential interview candidates. So I guess the question to you guys is, Sean, maybe what's the first steps that we what, – what are the first things that he's going to look to do as far as the Bulls organization? Well, I mean, he's already started that that journey as well. I mean, he, mm-hmm. he ended up bringing in J.J. Polk yesterday uh, to be, uh, I think it was assistant GM. I think it's J.J. Yes. Polk's uh, new um, new new title. Um, brought him over from the Pelicans, J.J. Polk, known as a salary cap guru guy. Um, and I, I think that's what he's doing right now. He's building off his front office. And I think the biggest thing that is at least going to be of, of importance to Bulls fans is he has the decision. This is being reported by Joe Colley and Casey Johnson. Uh, both guys have been doing phenomenal jobs. Uh, mm-hmm. covering the story. So shout out to Joe Colley of the Sun-Times and shout out to Casey Johnson of uh, NBC Sports Chicago. Um, both guys absolutely killing it uh, covering it. But uh, yeah, no, uh, they pretty much said that Karnashovas has the opportunity to control Garpax. Uh, John Paxson said he's fine if if he gets fired. He said whatever the Bulls want, you can do. I, I've never heard that before of just be like, hey, you can fire me if you want. Um but yeah, no, I mean, right now, I think the biggest thing in, in, in Bulls fans' mind is what's going to happen to John Paxson and Gar Foreman. Are they actually going to be fired? Are they going to be moved on? And every move so far has shown me that Karnashovas is going to try to get rid of them. Um, nothing has been announced yet, but 
it looks like they're trying to bring in scouting minds as well, um, which means that Gar Foreman would be likely phased out. And it seems like they're spending a lot of money that's being reported by Joe Colley is that Michael Reinsdorf has an open checkbook from Jerry Reinsdorf to build out this front office the right way and to spend money on their scouting departments and to spend money on their analytics department. And right now, Karnaschovas is just in the mindset of building out the team that he wants around him to make basketball decisions. And so far, so good. I mean, really, we've seen some great moves. I think the J.J. Polk's a great one. He's an Illini guy. Um, they have thrown out a lot of names um, for the uh, GM spot currently. Um, one thing that's a little bit concerning, and this is why we're going to have Pat on, is um, the – uh, undefeated and Mark Spears specifically of ESPN is reporting um, that let me get the exact tweet that uh, Troy Weaver, um, who was a part of the Thunder organization, uh, it's there was reports saying that the Bulls were denied permission to speak with Troy Weaver. Uh, others stated that as isn't true. And then Mark Spears came out and said Troy Weaver declined the opportunity to be a part of the second round of Bulls interviews for its head of basketball operations because he felt it was a token offer, sources say. Uh, he was told by some from Bulls they were expected to hire Connor Shovas by the time the interview was offered. Um, so, and, and Weaver, I think, was a part of the, the GM uh, list that was out there. So, I, I really just think that right now, um, outside of what Jerry and Michael are dealing with, uh, with the lack of minority uh, interviews, um, I, I do think that the Bulls have been in a great spot. Uh, I like the fact that they haven't been wasting time. I like the fact that they're out in front of us. I like the fact that they are going after and making sure that they can fill this out. And they haven't even waited until the end of the season, right? They got their first chance to make moves on guard packs and uh, on guard packs and they made it right away. And I think they've done a phenomenal job so far. And I think Karnaschovas has done a good job so far. Um, and, and really overall, I think Bulls fans should be feeling pretty good about themselves. No, I mean, with me, we, the, before we even made the offer, when it was like, for sure that we're going to try to sign him, the excitement from Bulls Twitter and opening up my Twitter and seeing all the other Bulls fans I follow, just mm -hmm. all the excitement we had, like, holy shit, like, we have gone through the darkest of days, and as President Trump likes to always say, there's finally light at the end of the tunnel for Bulls fans. There's mm -hmm. always light, and we have found ours. And Karna Shovas, I hope I said that right, um, mm -hmm. is that light. And the best thing, and I've said it on podcasts before, oh, it depends on how much decisions he's going to be able to make. Well, once that, and it seems like, hey, he's pulling the strings. I am super excited for this. I can't wait for what this team, what happens with this team, building out the front office. I can't wait for the day that my phone finally rings and it says Jim Boylan has been fired um, because yep. I am going to throw a party the first day that coronavirus is over and the quarantine's over for a uh, happy, happy Jim Boylan firing day. Um, and then I can't wait to see what happens with the draft and with the free agency and how Karnaschovas builds this team in his image. Because you look at Denver, mm -hmm. and Denver's a good team. Now, has Denver won a championship with him? No, but he built a good team in Denver, and I can't wait for well, this Bulls team to be just as good of a team. And I don't want to give Karnaschovas all the credit That's, there because yeah. Tim Conley is one of the most – respected basketball minds in, in the NBA. It's never uh, a one person he's, he's job. Basketball president. Yeah, but he but he is the basketball president of operations. Yeah. He is like the guy out there. That'd be mm -hmm. like giving Bobby Webster all the credit for what Toronto's done and not, mm -hmm. you know, giving any credit to Masai Ujiri. Um right. but I I I think that at least with Karnashovas, everything that you have heard from uh everybody that has been involved uh, involved in around him is that this guy wants to win. Mm -hmm. Um, he is, uh, I, the, I think my, ba my favorite antidote about learning about who Karnaschovas was, there's a couple, but he was a part of the 1992, uh, Lithuanian team who ended up playing the uh, dream team. I think mm -hmm. they lost 127, 76. Um, but there's pictures of Karnaschovas. Uh, I think he was like 18 at the time, uh, taking pictures on the sideline with like a, a disposable camera because you couldn't believe he was on the floor with like Michael Jordan and Larry Bird and Magic mm -hmm. Johnson. Uh, and, and that's really cool. And then he was also, um. PJ Car Carlissimo, who uh, saw him play, he was an assistant on the Dream Team, uh, mm -hmm. ended up offering him a scholarship to Seton Hall, uh, sight unseen. So he didn't even scout him. He just offered him, <laughs> offered him a, a scholarship to come play for Seton Hall. And when Ar Arturas came over, couldn't speak English. And Arturas apparently uh, just watched Wheel of Fortune and game shows all day to learn English and ended up becoming a two-time uh, scholar athlete. 
um, at Seton Hall. Um, so I, I really like him. He seems like he's a determined dude. He seems like he's got a, a great head on his shoulder. Seems like he wants to win. Um, it just seems like a, a breath of fresh air that was desperately needed in Chicago. And I think that's the biggest thing that you got to take away from this is, you know, he might build it in a certain way. He might try to find, you know, uh, you know, scouting might be the biggest thing that he's looking for. Uh, analytics yeah. uh, revolution might be what he's looking for, but no matter what it is, the goal of it is going to be to win. And that's the best thing that I've been sold on. I've been sold on this hire because of everything that they've, every everything that everyone has come out and said about him. Uh, the beat writer from Denver, the people that knew him previously in his career, like PJ Carlosmo, every person that knows Arturis has said that he is a great person, that everybody ends up being like attracted and, and, and coming to him and, and being mm-hmm. a, like he's a very appealing person to be around. Um, and it seems like he's a great leader. Um, so I love the determination from Arturis. I love the fact that, he really seems to be a, a great leader and, um, you know, obviously still got to fill out the GM spot, but, you know, wherever he is going to build this team out, whatever way he's going to attack, uh, you know, building a championship contender in mm-hmm. Chicago, it is going to be from the fact that this is the way that he thinks is the best way to do it. And this is the way that he thinks is going to help Chicago win the, the quickest and, and, and uh, you know, uh, greatest, you know, bringing championships back to Chicago. With you saying that, the one thing I just wanted to throw out there is do – how do I want to phrase this? Is should Bulls fans expect Karnashov – I almost said Karnivorous again. Yes, Karnashov. Karnashov. Should we expect him to be more of a, hey, I'm going to get talent through trades? Or could Chicago actually now, because you say, hey, it's approachable – could Chicago actually be a player when it comes to big free agents now? Well, let's let's cool it on that because I, I think we I think there's or still more to talk about. Or just free agents in and general it's, it's, that it's aren't too, Carlos Boozer. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 too early to talk about that because I, I don't think we've ever nailed down the issue of why free agents are coming here. Right? Is yeah. it the weather? Is it the lack of you know tax relief when I it mean, comes to state? Is it is it the fact of a lack of plan? I think uh, Daryl Morey was on the score on um, this week and he said the thing that draws. Uh, stars two teams when he got you know mm-hmm. James Harden obviously that was a little bit different is hey we've got a guys plan. are guys are attracted to a plan right yep. so yeah. I, that's the biggest thing is we we first have to figure out what his plan is before we start talking about you know can they uh, acquire a free agent or can they you mm-hmm. know go out and trade for somebody big we don't know because we don't know what the plan is um so didn't... I I I think that's too early of a question to ask and I I really don't think Bulls fans should be worried about you know uh how we're going to acquire a superstar or Mm -hmm. what place we're going to acquire a superstar. What's the price for a superstar going to be? Because really, if you get a superstar, that's all that matters. Well, I'm not even talking about superstars. Like didn't Pat Bev come out and say that the reason he didn't sign in Chicago was Garpax? No. Like the reason he went back to the Clippers. I thought there was something where he didn't sign with us because of Garpax. No, he he didn't, he never. I, from what I've seen, he's never given a reason why he didn't. Uh, mm-hmm. He he said he didn't like uh, Vinny Del Negro because Vinny Del Negro told him he was a bad defender. Um, <laughs> yeah, and they got the same reaction from the crowd because it was yep. taped at uh, All Star Break and everyone just started oh, laughing. Um, but uh, no, I, I think the biggest thing Pat Bev said was just that that team needed a leader, and if they had a leader yes. like him, they'd make the playoffs. Yeah. Um, but no, I I don't think that. I, I think that. Teams are players are probably going to be more inclined to give Chicago more of a look now. The fact that they're, you know, a cleaner front office. The fact mm-hmm. that they're stepping away from, uh, you know, a 15 year regime. This is this is now a new start for the Bulls, and I think that's going to at least make them more attractive. But it's still going to have to be on Arturis to sell these players in free agency to come to Chicago. So, I mean, if Anthony Davis ends up coming here, I don't think we can all say, oh, that's because of Garpax. I didn't think we could say that's because they made a move to clean up their yeah. reputation around the league. And whether that be because of Arturis' plan, whether that be because Arturis himself, or whether that just because, you know, hey, maybe in 2020, 2021, before Anthony Davis becomes a free agent in 2021, uh, you know, they have a great season. Like, we, we don't know what's going to be the, the way that right. ends up to them leading to them getting a superstar, if, if, if they even get one. Um, but I, I think really what Arturis needs to do is fill out his 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 staff and then end yep. up going and, and building out a plan. And, you know, whether that be firing Jim Boylan, whether that be, uh, you know, uh, hitting the draft in the draft this year with their your seventh overall pick or wherever um, is going to be the biggest, you know, uh, the biggest part of their their rebuild. 
it, it's just going to be starting about building a plan for for the Bulls. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And you know, we kind of touched a little bit on his background. Um, he was a international player, played for quite a long time uh, internationally. Anywhere from I think after his time at Seton Hall, I think it was ninety to ninety four. He was playing basically year league for ninety four through two thousand two between Spanish league, FIBA, everything basically available over there. And then he came over to the NBA, worked it with the NBA, then became an international scout for the Rockets mm-hmm. uh, for a handful of years, started up the uh, Adidas uh, Euro camp, which was huge. So someone who's very much in touch with the international scene and, you know, not only he has roots, but he's also gone back, continue to contribute and build and make sure that scene continues to thrive. So I think the expectation a lot of people see with him is that we are now going to be looking at European players uh, heavily with this year's draft coming up. And I, I I want to kind of disagree with that just, I'm just saying that's, that's the public like generalization. And that's why I want to see if you guys agree or not. I think it's one, a little racist just because the fact that he is European, that means, Oh, he only likes Europeans. Um, I'm, I, I, I'm from Chicago. So therefore I only like Chicago players. I think it's a little bit, you know, putting our tourists in a box um, because you look at the, xenophobic, the team that by he's, the way. Yeah, he's just, xenophobic. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, not not racist, but um, thanks for for clearing that up. Yep. But I mean, you look at the Denver team and Den- Denver is a fairly um, ambiguous team when it comes to nationalities. Obviously, when you think of their team, you think of Nikola Jokic and, you know, he's obviously Serbian. You look at Jamal Murray. He's Canadian, uh, but obviously he played over in Kentucky um, at a time in, in the States before that. Um, they had... Um, Hernan Gomez as well, a uh, Spanish player. Um, I, so I don't think they're going to be afraid to go out and get international players. I think that you're going to see Arturas, and I think that he's going to have less of a bias towards international players just because he knows what those players uh, have gone through. Um, and yeah. he obviously has been a scout. He, he, he knows what to look for. Um, he knows how to bring in guys. Um, I think he also helped the Rockets secure the rights to um, Sergio. Who was it? Uh, Sergio Lil. Uh, the guy who currently is uh, – he was a uh, two-time EuroLeague champion, 2017 EuroLeague MVP. Uh, the Rockets own his rights because of what Arturis um, said to Daryl Morey. So in the 2009 draft, uh, Lowell – I'm pronouncing his name wrong, but it's uh, Sergio LL uh, – I think it's Yol probably because it's double L. Uh, mm-hmm. But Sergio double L, U double L. Um, he's a guy that was uh, drafted by the Nuggets in uh, 2009, 34th pick. And then Daryl Morey told, uh, was said that Artura said that uh, you should go buy his draft rights. Uh, so they got his draft rights for two, uh, 2.25. He never, ev- he never came over, um, but he's Spanish league MVP, Spanish league finals MVP. He's like one of the best players uh, overseas right now. So he's a guy that, you know, clearly knows talent. And, mm-hmm. and I think that the biggest thing, again, is just breaking down those barriers of, all right, it's not that you're taking an American player because the American players are inherently better. You're just mm-hmm. taking the best basketball player. And that's what I think is going to be uh, the biggest thing that he brings is an open mind to taking talent wherever talent may be. So whether this guy's balling out on Antarctica or whether they're you know balling out in Canada, they're going to get a fair look. And I think that's the biggest thing that the, the Bulls fans should be excited about because you know he didn't overlook Nikola Jokic, right? And some people are saying he got lucky because he took him 41 overall. Yes, but you still had to take him at 41. He could have slipped to 60, right? So mm-hmm. he still had the opportunity to take him at 41, and he did do that. Um, I, I think that's the biggest thing that I, I'm excited about is, you know, if he sees Leandro Balmaro, uh, you know, and, and he's available in the second round, I don't think you're going to see the hesitance because, oh, he's a Spanish player, right? He's going to see the skill. He's going to see the handles. He's going to see the ability to pass um, from a 6-7 frame. Like, that's what he's going to see. He's going to see the skill in these players and not where they're coming from and where, they, where they've where they been. He's going to see what can you do on the basketball court, and that's what I'm uh, mainly excited about. So I, I don't think that uh, we're going to see more of an, uh, an international you know influx into this mm-hmm. Bulls team. I do just think that we're going to see more of an openness – to bringing in basketball players. And a big thing that he likes is skill. Um, we see that with, with, with Jokic. We see that with um, with uh, Michael Porter Jr. in some ways, ways, too. I mean, you could say that you know they, they didn't pass him up because he had the skill. Um, it, and no, none of us were going to be you know uh, disagreeing with that because we all had uh, Michael Porter Jr. as a top five pick. But you know, I, I think it's just those type of things. They're going to look for skilled players, and uh, I think that's the thing I'm most excited for. And Bull Bull, obviously. I mean, one of, one of the <laughs> and, most and Bull Bull. Yes. skilled players in the draft last year. Ricky, what do you what do you think about what this means for our draft thoughts going into the 2020 draft? 
I just, for me, I think there's going to be more, like Sean was saying, more thought into what's going on. And I think that the big thing is, and this goes into free agency too, is for, for once, I feel like the Bulls are actually going to have a plan. Now, I know it's a little bit rapid to like, okay, we got to get everyone in place. We got to, there's dominoes that still need to fall um, Mm -hmm. in order for the full plan to start to be like, okay, this is the direction we go in. But like, for once as a Bulls fan, I feel confident that we're not going to fuck it up. Like, I don't think that like everyone out there, we would make jokes like, oh, Bulls seventh pick, we're going to get the seventh pick. But like, now I don't make those jokes anymore in my head because even if we're at seven, we're not going to be the Bulls of yesteryear. But we're going to be the Bulls I, that I, I think he just, I think that Carter Shova is going to be because, what? What BS? Well, the, the BS of the fact that the bull, the best thing the Bulls have done over Gar Pax's mm-hmm. tenure is draft. I, and that's enough. Like, I'm not saying that they've done bad, but like, I do feel like Gar Pax since the Jimmy Butler fiasco, Mm-hmm. There hasn't been a plan to our rebuild. It's just been like, hey, hey we're just going to take player, 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 player. And it's like, yeah, we're drafting good players, but how do they well, fit together? <laughs> I, I disagree with that. I, I, I And then they hire a coach and Jim Boylan. Yes, it's a bunch of moves, but like, yeah, I feel like for once with a GM, everything is going to fit together. It's not just going to be a bunch of different aspects and then none of them clash. Draft picks. I, veterans, coach, they're all going to fucking finally fit together like a piece, like a puzzle. I disagree with the fact that you're saying that, because, I mean, you look at this team, and if they were all healthy, this would be a very, I mean, this would have been a playoff, playoff team. team. You, yes. you have you have Chris Dunn, you have Zach Levine, you have Otto Porter Jr., you have Laurie Markkinen, and you have Wendell Carter Jr., right? Yes. Even with Jim Boylan, that's a playoff team. That, yeah. that, that plan works. The players weren't the issue. It was just the lack of leadership. And that, that, that you're absolutely right. There wasn't a leader in that locker room. Jim Boylan wasn't a leader. Gar, Gar Foreman was hiding for the past five years. And John Paxson mm-hmm. wasn't even talking this year. So they were all hiding. There was no fucking leadership from this team. So, so that's the biggest issue. I don't think it's the draft. I don't think it's the players or the lack of plan. And maybe it is lack of plan because it's a lack of leadership. That's where that's what we're missing out on. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing the Bulls gained in, in Arturis Karnashovas is a leader. So I, I disagree with the, the draft thing, and I'm not worried about picking seventh. If they're picking seventh, Arturis and, and John Paxson might make the same pick. The difference is, is that Arturis is actually going to have the nuts behind it to be like, all right, now this is our guy, and this is how he's going to fit into our plan. And because we drafted X, Y is going to happen, and we're going to try to put him into you know Z's situation, right? We're going to see a plan. We're going to see a leadership. We're going to try to see him build out a playoff team where John Paxson – just seemed like he was doing his job and going through the motion over the past five years because Derrick Rose got injured in 2011. That was the issue with the Chicago Bulls. That was the issue with Garpax is the fact that none of them had the ability to lead this team. When Jim Boylan started getting attacked, there wasn't a leadership coming out and saying, all right, we believe in Jim Boylan because of X, and we do think that this is going to be something that steps out, right? Jim Boylan was left to just die out there this season. So whether you know you 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 know they're drafting you know X player at seven, I think there's going to be an actual leader there in the Bulls front office, and that's the biggest thing. And also credit to Michael Reinsdorf; he's become a leader in this this these past couple of weeks. This has been something that has been very good to see. Um, obviously, there's issues with the the lack of minority uh, interviews, and and we'll we'll get to that with with Pat. But I, I do think that the Bulls so far, at least you know over the past four days have shown the most leadership that we've ever seen uh, in in recent memory. Well, I think the biggest thanks for all of this has to go to, um, I've seen that it was Jerry's grandchildren that kind of pushed for this, but whoever convinced Jerry to go for the all-star game this year, because without that, this wouldn't have happened. National spotlight. The spotlight that we got on Chicago and like, I think that alone was the thing to finally push it over the edge and be like, fuck it. We need to make a change because it really yeah. showed that we're not in as great of a spot nationally as they like to think we are. All right. So he's already been making moves for his front office, continue to fill in those uh, assistant GM roles uh, and building this front office with the guys that, you know, brings something special to the table that he's seen and that he likes we turn the tables you talked about 
you know, the lack of leadership in the locker room. You talked about the lack of, you know, a lot of things with this Bulls team this past year. Obviously, the first thing, once he finishes the front office, we're, we're all looking at is the head coach, right? That's, yeah. can, that's I, can I just be... throw out real quick before we get yeah. to the head coach? Uh, just these are the guys that they're looking for to uh, replace uh, just to be the GM. Yeah. Uh, this was from uh, Joe Colley at 530 last night. Uh, so Troy Weaver was one of them. Obviously, now Mark Spears has said that he's not going to be a part of it. Dallas is Michael Finley. Yes, that Michael Finley, uh, the former player that used to wear number four. I nice. love Michael Finley. And I'm looking at his Wikipedia page. Did you know he was a producer on Lee Butler's The Daniel and Birth of a Nation? No, no. Yeah. No. Michael Finley's got a film producing career along with being the vice president of basketball operations for the Mavericks, uh, which is awesome. Uh, so shout out to Mike Finley, great player, apparently now creating great films uh, and also being a part of the, the, the Mavericks front office. So shout out to Mike Finley, uh, Denver's Calvin Booth, who apparently is very um, uh, well regarded in that Denver uh, front office. And they they might be trying to keep him around now that Karnaschovas left. They might be trying to promote, promote them to his GM. Uh, and then uh, Nazi Muhammad uh, from OKC. Uh, the re- reports are that Nazi is fairly still young and doesn't mm-hmm. really know the ins and out too much of a front office, but he's got amazing potential, uh, an amazing eye, apparently. And then uh, Orlando's Matt Lloyd, who started off with the Bulls as well. Um, and then Kali also reported that Shane Battier is highly coveted in the league, um, which might make him tough to pull away. Pat Riley might decline any uh, ability for him to move, which would be unfortunate because that's my guy for the pick. But those, at least GM wise, that's who you could be expecting for Bulls fans. And hopefully, uh, if Shane Batty gets signed, uh, that's the guy that you should be rooting for to be the next GM. It's for a the great Bulls, Shane Batty too for the Bulls. I, I would I would love that signing. He's he was a great basketball player. He was always one of the smartest guys out there. Super dedicated. Mm-hmm. Um, love, nothing, uh, nothing but positive for him. He he can relate to players. He can help them in, integrate. Uh, analytics into their game. He'll mm-hmm. integrate analytics into the front office moves and decisions. And also, Arturis is a former player too. And you got mm-hmm. two former guys mm-hmm. that know what it's like to be a player, to be a professional. And they're both guys that have analytical mindsets. It just seems like a perfect mesh. Well, that's the thing you're mentioning. I mean, Finley, former player, Nazi Muhammad, former mm-hmm. player. Like, there, there's definitely a trend here with as far as who we want to be the face. I mean, look GM at the Sun, Suns did the same thing. James Jones, former player. Yeah, like that's and what I Calvin, think about. Calvin Booth's a former player too. Calvin Booth yeah. uh, used to be uh, on on the Wizards, Mavericks, Supersonic stuff like that. So I I, I love seeing this stuff. Um, I I really do love uh, seeing like players become coaches mm-hmm. and then players become GM guys. Um, I I love seeing uh, that type of stuff happen. So shout out to those guys and and mm-hmm. uh, hopefully they make the the right decision. Yeah, no, I I agree. Uh, I can't believe I skipped over the GM role itself after we spent so much time talking about. We didn't expect that the guy coming in would be given yeah. the, the full reins as uh, president of operations. It's a little bit tough, though, just because I, – and I think they only did that because they wanted to give him a promotion. Yeah, I think yeah. he's probably going to have mainly GM roles. They just gave him the title just so he felt like he was getting a promotion and leaving Denver. Um, but, yeah, no, and apparently he didn't come cheap as well, which good for our tourists. Secure that yeah. bag, man. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think I think the reason why we didn't cover it too much is just because it's tough to determine what they're going to bring because our tourist is mainly going to be calling the shots here. Yep, 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 yep. All right. Um, but going back to that piece of the coach, the guy who's going to be on the court in the locker room, making sure these players are able to execute on what he's laid out. I know Boylan's not long for the Bulls. It, are, are we expecting, you know, a Bulls head coaching search to begin in the next week? I mean, is that should that be the expectation out there for people? Oh. Um, no, I, I think that there hasn't been moves enough move made in the front office to say that this is going to be something that they're going to uh, to be looking at with Jim Boylan wise. I think they're I, I, I think that they won't fire him until we get announcement that the season won't happen. I don't think there's a point to fire him if there's still going to be basketball played in 2019 2020 um, That's fair. i could see that i could see them finishing out the season with jim boylan uh for how many ever games that may be whether it be like 12 or i don't know how many games are left uh but yeah whether it be like 12 games or whatever i think they could totally i could see them finishing with jim boylan and then them reevaluating so i wouldn't see a move being made until like july uh when it comes to jim boylan's uh uh, position just because that's when we'll likely hear about the the 2019 2020 season that's fate Ricky, what do you think? I think that they are already going to... I I would like a firing sooner rather than later, but like I kind of agree with Sean. I don't think it's going to happen within the next week. 
My question, though, is is I wonder if they are behind the scenes. Obviously, you can't interview people until you fire Boylan. I wonder if they're already talking about it, though. Like, they're already got a board, oh, yeah. like, whiteboard sure on list. the wall. Like, okay, here's the list of guys that we want to target. Um, Jim Boylan's not part of the plan. He I shouldn't wonder, be part of the plan. Mm-hmm. And I wonder I, if there's an advantage, though, to getting rid of him now and getting first dibs on totally. potential coaches. Totally. You know, we talk about Kenny Atkinson. We've talked about you know Dave Yeager, mm-hmm. guys who um, both had had previous success and got cut short by their teams. So I wonder if it's we want first dibs mm-hmm. on the market. Could we see you know a, a more aggressive approach here? I would totally do that. Well, and that's that. what happened with the, the GM spot, too. I mean, it, it, they already showed that they weren't going to be waiting and sitting on their laurels to, you know, wait until the season's over for guard packs. They went out and fired them. I, I just think the issue is there. Um, Karnaschovas hasn't been able to see this team play yet, right? Mm-hmm. He hasn't been able to see the guys that he currently has go out and play and what this team brings and how Boylan works with these guys. You could just watch so, this I mean, year. You can watch <laughs> this wasn't year, but working. I think it's different. It's different when you you get a, a new change in in your front office. I mean, Jim Boylan might be doing. I, I we don't know what it's like behind the scenes. Obviously, everything that is being shown to us is bad. But it could be, you know, hey, maybe he gets better direction from this GM and he's able to put himself and his players into better situations. So I, I I don't know if if Boylan's dead in the water just yet. I wouldn't say his chances are good. Um, but I don't think Boylan's dead in the water yet. I will say. If uh, right now I'm pie in the sky about the new GM, I am going to be very unhappy with him if he does not fire Boylan. Um, Because I feel like it should be clearing of house. You know what? Just clean slate, clear everyone out. That includes medical. That includes um, coaching. Clear everything out. Get everything. It's your clean slate to use. I I don't feel like the same thing you said about me with the draft thing. I don't really buy the, oh, I got to see how these guys play. No, I saw how it played out. I saw how frustrated the players looked out there. I saw all the player-only meetings and how frustrated they got with Boylan to where we can't go through another season of that. We can't. And the thing that, like, yeah, the Nets technically got ahead of the curve by firing their coach to open up their job. But we're mm-hmm. not going to compete well, with they, them. They did that before COVID yeah. even happened. Um, before KD got COVID, we're, they, they we KD are happens. we are not going to compete. Like the coaches that are going to apply for that job are not looking at our job. Right, we're in different the, different uh, timelines, states of being. Yeah. You know, the one that I look to is we have. To, I would love to do this now before mm-hmm. the Knicks do it because the Knicks they similar boat, similar boat, and some would say better market. Mm-hmm. Oh, if you bring that team to a championship, I mean, the, you've got different way, like different storylines. But like, if you bring championship to the Mecca, like some oh, may dude, view that greater than yeah, bringing but... a championship back to the Bulls. Where I think we got to get ahead of that curve. We got to get but ahead of again, it so we again, get the best best candidate we can. But then again, you're not dealing with. You, uh, you, I Bulls have a better owner. I mean, uh, you, you don't get worse mm-hmm. than James Dolan. Yeah. Um, I think that the Bulls front office seems to be more complete than the Knicks. I mean, Leon Rose is their GM. He's never held this job. He's a, he's a former agent. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you look at the teams. Bulls are better personnel wise. So really, you're just and then you know, the only battle that New York wins there is the actual city. No, I know. Um, and that's and what that's, I feel that, like might sway someone over. And that's depending on you know really your opinion. I mean, some people love New York more mm-hmm. than Chicago. But some people fucking hate New York and love Chicago. Um, I've never been to New York, so I really can't comment <laughs> on that. But uh, I mean, I, I'm I'm fine with how big Chicago is. Chicago has a lot to offer, so I don't know if it's really uh, that big of a deal breaker. I, I think that the Bulls shouldn't be rushing to any moves because we don't know what the season's going to hold right now. And I think that if they start hearing that other guys are being interviewed, you know, then they'll start making their decision. But I don't think they're going to rush anything, and I, and I don't think this should be rushed. Like. I understand you want well, Jim Boylan fired. I understand every by Bulls saying fan Jim want, Boylan want should be Jim fired. Boylan I'm not fired. saying that it should be rushed. I agree with you. Should be thought out, but I don't think Jim Boylan should be brought back 
I don't. I don't think Jim Boylan's year. going to lead this team to a championship, and I don't think he's going to be it, if they win the championships when Karnaschovas is mm-hmm. the G- GM or basketball president of operations. I don't think Jim Boylan's going to be the the head coach leading that team, but I, I do think there is some merit in keeping him around if there's going to be you know 12 games left. Um, I, I think it'd be quite ridiculous to fire him and just just for really no reason, um, especially if the season's going on. It's not like the the Nets are going to be holding head coaching gigs with COVID going on. Uh, I, 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 I highly doubt that this is going to be that contested of a of a uh, of a head coaching search. Um, and I don't think Kenny Atkinson is going to be like, OK, well, the Knicks are offering me a job and there's no way that the Bulls aren't going to fire their guy. So like, I, I think that coaches won't be in a rush mm-hmm. as well to uh, to take the first job that's offered them to, to them. But, you know, I, I think that Boylan being fired is, is going to happen in the year. Um, yeah. I, I don't think he's going to be the coach for long. And then you got to look at the other candidates, right? Dave Yeager's name has been mentioned. I kind of hate it. Um, I know Yeager's had success everywhere he's gone in mm-hmm. Memphis, in mm-hmm. Sacramento, but the the way he left Memphis was weird. And then the way he left Sacramento was weird too. And it didn't seem like players really missed him uh, yeah. when, when he left Sacramento or Memphis, which is concerning. Uh, so I really don't know if Yeager's the guy. I know that he hasn't had the best front offices as well. Vladi Divac obviously is a uh, <laughs> moron. Um, yeah. But – I don't know if he's the guy. I, I think really looking at the candidates that are out there, the 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 one that gets me the most excited, at least looking at what could really change a culture, is Becky Hammond. Uh, um, I, I think she deserves a chance, and I think that she'd be uh, really incredible uh, if if they were able to go out and get her. But you know, just thinking about the names that are possibly out there, uh, Jaeger's one, Hammond's one. Uh, everyone loves Mark Jackson. Um, the one uh, that I'm seeing get more and more traction is um, Adrian Griffin. Uh, mm-hmm. assistant coach in Toronto. And apparently he has a connection with Karnaschovas with yeah. his time in Houston, 0304, I think, right? No, Griffin uh Karnaschovas didn't come until uh oh, 08, six, I think. How oh, many then? It was um, just in the article. Were, Karnaschovas worked uh in the front office from 2003 to 2008 and then he became a scout. Mm-hmm. From 2008 to 2013. Okay, yeah. Then this article's wrong because this article says to top it off, um, he has ties to Karnashovas. The two were with the Houston Rockets in 03 and 04. Um, so just maybe as a different role. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, potentially mm-hmm. well, he's not always the 100% truth. But... No, this is from uh, sports. No, I'm Mark saying or... as far as Karnashovas, yeah. um, time, what he was mm-hmm. up to at that point. So hard to say. Um, yeah. Does the fact that uh, Griffin, is all... Griffin is from Seton Hall. They played mm-hmm. together at Seton oh. Hall. Maybe that's yeah. it. Because yeah, Griffin uh, was a player Griffin with the was Rockets there from... in 03, 04. Yeah, Griffin was there from 92 to 96. Karnaschovas was at Seton Hall from 90 to 94. So they had two years overlap there. Nice. So there's a good good connection there. So that would be an interesting move to do. And again, where do you want to poach from? The best teams in the league. Yeah. Toronto's doing pretty good. Um, um the, so no. the biggest thing that I, I would want is a guy that's analytic focused. I, I love Taylor Jenkins. Um yeah. we, I know we were making fun of him a little bit earlier, but we did also say like Taylor Jenkins guy that that that, yep. that jumps out of nowhere. Um and, and that team looked great. And I, I, I really would love to see a, a younger coach uh that, that does have analytics on the mind and, and, and is trying to push this team forward. Mm-hmm. Um I, I think that's where I would be looking, I would be looking a little bit younger, a guy that might not have been, you know, assistant before, or if he has, is you know, fairly new to the game. Uh, mm-hmm. Those are the type of guys that I'm looking for. Or Becky Hammond, I think she's she's interesting because she's obviously got something to prove. If, if she gets hired, she's gonna be the first woman uh, head coach mm-hmm. in any of the four mm-hmm. major league sports. She's got, you know, all the motivation in the world to go out and kick ass and and, and just that, tons of basketball knowledge. I mean, from being a yeah, player yeah. growing up, playing against guys, it's just the, the level of basketball involvement in her life is so heavy like mm-hmm. and then I, being around pop being around the spurs being around that organization working with their talent development groups like they're there she, she's up there she's got yeah i didn't i didn't feel like the basketball knowledge needed to be set just because she's fucking becky hammond oh, yeah no uh, right for it's, people you know, who don't know great WNBA player you know uh, his, you know really good uh, uh college player as well uh, small school dominated, had to work her way up to be a, a, a great WNBA player. I mean, obviously, you know, you were talking about the the, the pop connection as well. She ended up playing in San Antonio uh, for their WNBA team, and then Pop saw how smart she was and, and brought her on. She's been on, on Pop's coaching staff uh, for a long time. But you know, you're absolutely right. Yep. So I wonder if the 
situation with some players morale can be saved then you know do you think that keeping Boyle in around for a little bit of time or just in general like do you think that this move in the front office will quell some of the unease and and, and the you know un- unhappiness that's going on in the locker room right now you know we've heard the Lowry Markinen comments uh been passed out from locker rooms about how unhappy he is and you know if things don't change I'm not I won't be back kind of a thing uh we've heard Zach make comments we've heard uh several people on the Bulls make comments about how unhappy they've been I uh, you got to think this has got to be like the like okay fresh start let's give this a chance you know we have you know new expectations to set as a team this isn't the same team anymore right yeah, this isn't the same team. Uh, obviously, you know, moving players will be something that's big. Uh, marketing, Levine, uh, Wendell, all that stuff. Um, but no, I, I think this is a, a, a new start for the Bulls. Um, you've been looking at a John Paxson-led team ever since LeBron's been in the league, right? And look just how much the league's changed since LeBron has come into the league. Um, this has not been a, a team that has gotten an outside voice since 2003. That's the biggest thing that you're getting. You're gaining an outside voice, and that's something the Bulls, that, the Bulls desperately needed here, and, and this is a huge one for the Bulls. Final thoughts uh, before we wrap up and move into our next topic, guys. Super excited. Can't wait for what the future holds. Same. Go Bears. Go Bears. Um, Good for the nah, Bulls, even though, not, even though I'm not a fan. Yep, I appreciate it, though. Ever um, since Michael Jordan left, I've not been a fan. Weren't you, like, show up weren't and watch. you like two when he left? Uh, No, I was one. There you go. March when did Mike retire? Yeah. Oh, wait. Two. I guess, yeah. Because it was after the 98 season. Yeah, but he, he retired in June, so it was technically one. Yeah. Okay. Close to being two. 